What's going on, everybody? So uh, I started a little like uh, bodywork um, section on my channel, and uh, for the two videos I put up, one of them, you know, for me anyway, got all what I think is a lot of views, <laughs> less than 50, but you know, I don't have that many people that follow me. So uh, you know, you guys are showing some interest in this. I figured I'd show you what I'm working on here, and uh, just a heads up, this is going to be van roof repair and uh you know how you go about fixing something like this and why it gets the way it does to spot it early detection my van is way worse off i need to replace the whole roof that's how bad it is this one is actually somewhat repairable but i'll show you what i've done i've already repaired one side so uh i can't show you how i did that side but i figured i can show you how i'm going to do this side this side is not as bad as the other side so uh, let me get up on the roof and i'll show you what i've done so far and uh how this began here we go. So on these roofs, the this is seam sealer is what they call this. The seam sealer cracks, and uh, it 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 starts to give away. And when it gives away, where this is welded to this, really. All right. Well, it's raining a disgusting amount. I just had a phone call. I had to take. So where I left off, this seam sealer gets cracked. The weather dries it out, and it splits. And uh, you see how how it gets here. It just uh, it turns real hard and falls apart. So what happens? Water is allowed to get in here, and you see, you see in a good spot where the roof comes down, and they they spot weld it from the factory, and then all they do after that is they put the seam sealer in, and then that seam sealer is the only thing that saves this thing from the weather. Well, that and there's a layer of paint over it, but the paint's just to make it look good. So what I'm having to do to this van? Let me move back here. I'll show you what's going on. So what happens is the water goes into this channel underneath that layer of metal and then inside here the water just sits there and as it evaporates up it rots the metal from the out the inside out and puts all these little holes through here. The other side was way worse than this. Like I'll go on the other side and show you what I had to do, but basically from here halfway up the van I had to replace this whole section. I had to weld a piece in and then body work over it and um, fix it. I'm gonna go on the other side, I'll show you. Obviously I've already done it and I apologize for not recording it. I'll record this side. This is kinda gonna get the same treatment but I'm, not, I'm only gonna do like the here. I just gotta do like three feet of it. And then uh, I put the, I put new, you can see right there, that's a seam sealer, self-leveling seam sealer. So um, let me go on the other side, I'll show you what I've done, the, the finished product, it's in primer after the primer the whole thing's going to get painted body color but uh i'll show you what it looks like beforehand so here we are this whole thing from here all the way around and of course i got seam sealer on it all the way up to that spot was rotten i had the weld metal in here and um including this i fixed this one already they're all like that that's where the water sits so i gotta weld all these up too and fix them i've already done this one but um, I welded this whole thing, put a piece of sheet metal in there for strength, and then I put the body filler on there. Spent This took five hours to do, just this one side. And then I put the seam sealer in here. And this seam sealer is going to keep the weather out for another, I don't know, 20, 30 years or whatever. So you can see it goes all the way up to the drip edge by the windshield. So uh, this side's already done. I've done halfway because this, this side's finished as far as I'm concerned. i got to fix these, but, you know. And this is the product you would use. It's a self-leveling seam sealer. It's epoxy basis, two parts. You mix it together and uh, it dries uh, rock hard. So um, two of them, I've used two of them so far. These aren't cheap either. These are uh, almost $50 a piece. So it's $200 worth of product just in the seam sealer. But this is a very important step. You cannot, and you can't use like silicone. Silicone will dry up, crack, and fall out within a year. It won't, it won't protect it. You got to use this stuff, and uh, it'll it'll last you forever. All right, let me get to work. Oh, and it takes a special cock gun. I had to borrow this from somebody. These are like another almost hundred dollars just for the cock gun. If you're doing it all the time, it's worth it. But uh, if not, um, find someone to borrow it from. So let me get let me get to cutting this out of here, and I'll show you what it takes to fix something like that. All right, it was raining like crazy a few minutes ago, so I couldn't really record because it was so noisy. But uh, primary tools to get the old stuff out, screwdriver, hammer, this was up here for something else, I didn't use that, and a uh, drill with a wire brush, which you see I have annihilated this thing, just getting here and uh, 
you know, get out the little bits. The hardest part to get is in here where it, uh, there's like a little channel. You have to, you can either use a screwdriver and a hammer to like get in here and then pick it out or you can use that wire brush. But, um, that's like the hardest thing to get all that junk out of there. I'm sure I'm shaking the camera around. Sorry guys. But uh, that's what I'm working on now. I'm trying to get all this junk out of here and then I'm gonna start evaluating this and uh, start patching these holes that I got. That whole section is gonna be cut out. So I'll take you along with me, cut that out, show you how I weld it in and uh, we'll do this repair together. How about that? So the rain's calmed down, but it's still hot. Got my fans going. I cut this piece out. You can see what happens on the back side. So I find good metal and I just outlined it with a Sharpie and I cut, you know, what I think is good. And then what we got left is this lip. So you can see from like here to here, I'm gonna attempt to come in here and see how that comes right out. So, and then they use some more glue. And then I'll come in here with a shop back and clean this whole channel out. So I'm gonna do that from here. I'm gonna try to cut this some more. I do that with a Dremel, small rotary cutter. I've used this one so far, four and a half inch sheet metal cutting thing um, to do this line, you know what I mean? Using electric tools is just so much easier than uh, air tools. Unless you got a big compressor. Like if you do this for a living, like I'm sure you're just watching this for entertainment, but like if you're trying to do this for yourself, this might be some useful information. But uh, this is it. I'm gonna try to come in here, clean this channel all up and uh, prepare it for the new piece. And the new piece I gotta make, I gotta make it out of sheet metal. So I'll show you what I do. Let me get this all cleaned up and uh, I'll turn the camera back on. So I found some metal flashing. It's about the same gauge thickness metal. I've already welded a piece in here to corner. I'm gonna slide this in. Now I was lucky I found some uh, flashing that had like a 90 degree bend in it and I hammered it out. And uh, that's what's gonna give me this lip right here. So I'm gonna snake this guy up underneath here. And then uh, I'm gonna use, I got some vice grips I'll show you here in a second. I'll get it all jigged up and uh, I'll tack it in places so it won't move and then I'll come in and um, I don't actually run a bead on this stuff because it's so thin you can't really run a bead. Like if you had a TIG welder and about 40 years of experience, you could. But uh, you know, I wanna teach you guys, like if you got the little $120 Harbor Freight, not Harbor Freight, well Harbor Freight sells them too, but uh, Amazon welder, a little red one. I'm using a different one. I'm using, this is a gas welder just cause it's easier for me and it's here and it's set up. But uh, you could use that guy, you know. The problem with that guy is that I've experienced is, um, you know, your, your, your voltage, I'll show you what I mean here. Your, uh, this is your amperage. You can't adjust your wire speed. This is the MIG-130. I love this welder. This display for top, I, I have no idea, but uh, I love this freaking welder. For 120 bucks, I've done so much work with this little welder. It's a flux core, you know? And uh, this is awesome. I love this welder, love it. In fact, it shouldn't be on the floor being treated like crap. That's how much I love it. I'm gonna put it away here right after this video. But, this is what we're doing now. This is an actual legitimate, you know, I'm running MIG gas and um, regular wire feed. You know, this, this is real deal stuff here. So, I'm going to slide that up here. I'm going to show you. I'm going to pinch. I got special vice grips that I use, body vice grips, and uh, stuff you can get off Amazon. And I'm going to weld all this up. And, you know, from the factory, they only put a spot weld like every, I don't know, eight inches or so. I'm going to put more spot welds on this. It won't look like much, but I'm actually using more spot welds than the factory does. And then when you come back with the epoxy and glue it all in place, it, it's a strong bond. So uh, let me get this in here and get it all tacked in place and I'll show you what it looks like. So I've welded this in and trust me, I've used more spot welds in this drift weld than the factory uses, all right? Spot weld these as close as you can without burning through. 
okay if you're doing it on a door like I did the uh, shaved door handles I actually welded beads on there and it ruined my door it wrinkled the crap out of it so uh, <laughs> trust me stick with these spot welds here I'm gonna teach you a couple things here this is just from years of experience first things first get yourself a clipboard don't mind the hardener some printer paper all right don't worry about this guy when I first started this um, my boss gave me one spatula and said I'm only giving you one if you want more you have to buy them I freaked out I tried to clean it off always got ruined you know what I learned you just leave it in this mess it comes out freaking clean every time don't worry about it don't stress it okay your printer paper I'm ready to go okay ready to go now I've got this this mess of a weld job here first things first this is uh, O'Reilly's so this stuff here it's just regular body filler but it's got fiberglass in it this is your first coat see that fiber hair in that stuff go to Home Depot and uh, get you a bunch of these stir sticks mix this stuff up you want to make sure it's mixed all the way mix it up real good now I just used this yesterday so it's pretty well mixed and then that's it you're going to only put on as much as you think you can use in one time so I'm gonna grab this much here right and it only takes a little bit of hardener I'm shaking it like that's gonna do something <laughs> it's enough hardener I really need to set you guys up on a tripod because there's a technique to this you gotta mix it together that's one thing once you mix it together you got like three or four minutes to, to spread it on as much as you can right so the key to this is if you spread it on right you don't have to sand much off and you're gonna not waste that much right so uh, man I wish there was some way I could set this camera up. Let me see if I can set the tripod up so you can watch what I do. I'm going to smear this upwards. That's what I'm going to do. This whole thing. I'm going to smear this up with this. I'm going to get this and just blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to worry about this. This is the uh, seam sealer that I got in the cock tubing. Right? I'm not going to mess with this at all. I'm going to mess with this. I want to blend all this together. This is just this is just one white blah. Right? So da, 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 da. it's going to cover all these holes and gaps. That's why this stuff has got that uh, fiber in there. It's going to cover all that for us. It's going to make it strong, right? This stuff here, this is what we form once we get this all contoured. And this is only really one coat. Then we come in with this stuff, the regular body filler, and that's what we make it look pretty with, right? So let me see if I can get you guys on a tripod. And uh, you'll, be over, you'll be over here looking down. I don't know how much you'll be able to see, but it's better than nothing. Let me try it. So the next thing you're going to want is your, uh, this is 80 grit, I prefer 50 grit, 60 grit. You're going to want some gnarly sandpaper on deck for this. I only got two pieces, I might actually have to run out and get more to finish this job tonight, which might not be good for me, but um, do that. I just, I folded it in half, stuck it onto itself, That's I do this, I do this stuff by hand. So you're going to take this. So this holds that in for me. I'm holding this end, right? I'm going to mix this together. You want it all one color. This is something you learn to get it all in one shot. You're not going to get that right away. Don't worry about it. Eventually, you'll figure it out. Okay. 
I'm not an expert either, so don't worry about it. Nobody's going to call you out. Okay, there you go. You're mixed. So I'm going to lay this out so I can grab some, right? That's all I'm going to do. And you're going to do this as quick as you can before it hardens. So there you go. Don't worry about how much to mix. There you go. I made a mess on my thing so it's easy to clean once it hardens. It's not as much of a mess as I like to make. But that's it. Um, real easy. Nice and smooth. It's going to sand real easy once it hardens. I'm going to start sanding this in about 10-15 minutes. And all of this, what you just saw, like this isn't perfect by any means, but this is enough to get the job started, right? So. You don't have to worry about all the little details. I wasn't happy with that. That always happens when you go back in to you know, straighten something out. You always make more of a mess than you originally started with. But this is it. This is going to sand real nice with this. I'm going to be able to use this one piece. It'll sand that down, and then we'll be ready for this stuff here. So um, I'll turn the camera off. I'll turn it back on when it hardens, and I'll show you what I'm going to do here. So how do you know when you're ready to sand? Like, it's tacky, you know? Is it ready to sand? Am I ready? Like, if you can just peel this stuff right off, you're ready to go, buddy. Let me tell you what. So... I went in my repository and I found a bunch of, uh, I got 40 grit, 80 grit. I'm going with the 80 grit today. I got a bunch of this stuff. So this is enough to finish my job right here. So we got this one, the 80 grit here. You can do like a 40 grit if you got a really big mess. You know what I mean? Like if you got globs and stuff, like if you just haven't perfected putting it on smooth, you can do the 40 grit to make it go quicker. You don't want this to dry all the way, but you don't want it to be so tacky to where it's gumming it up. You can use air to blow it out too. I don't do this wet. Like I showed, uh, I got made a short how I do wet sanding on my my, my uh, primer. You don't do this wet. So let me show you what I'm gonna do here. And be careful, this is fiberglass. So like if there's a hair sticking up and it's too hard, it will puncture your skin. See how it's balling up in the sandpaper? That means it's a little too sticky. It's not hard enough. You can take a, a wire brush like this. Nine times, nah, I didn't put a lot of force on there, but nine times out of 10, you can clean your sandpaper. And all I'm trying to do with this, you see down here where there's like lumps? I'm trying to make it smooth. That's all I'm trying to do. I want, it, I want it smooth. So when you put this stuff on, it looks nice. You know what I mean? And if you got any high spots, right now is a good time. Take your hammer. Like that's metal right there. It's easier to fill a dent than it is to, uh, you know, grind down some metal. So now that's a good dent right there. And this stuff's soft enough where it's pliable and can flow with that so you didn't crack it. So this is it. It, it just makes it harder for yourself when you try to uh, keep going. 
The first guy that I worked for, man, he made me, like if I threw a piece away, he made me take it out of the trash and reuse it. And like, I don't know, ever since then, I've been like, you know, if I'm doing body work and I'm not happy with my sandpaper, I'm gonna go get a new one. Cause it makes the job go so much easier. Try to do all this with dull sandpaper, it's a nightmare. So when I'm holding this, I'm holding it kind of like this to make that contour. I know it doesn't look like much, but when you're not using a sanding block or anything, like cupping it like this, I don't know. It's something you just got to develop a feel for. That's it, I'm happy with this first coat here. That's all you wanted to do is bond the old to the new. That's it, with this first the fiber hair. Now, remember what I said about the printer paper. too much way too much way too much I want to go with red what do I do with the red that's oh, blue too yep that's blue also I thought I had red you can switch colors up so you know uh, which layer is which Cut the paper, that ain't cool. God, I mixed way too much. God, I got it on my pants. Yeah, look at me.
When this is hard, I'll turn the camera back on. So about five minutes has passed. When it gets like that, you know you're ready. It's still warm. You only get one of these, remember that. <laughs> So I got a blower on. I apologize if you can't hear me. Um, it's just, it's hot. It's really hot. I dropped the lid. So you want to start sanding on this when you can like dig your fingernail into this. You can wait till tomorrow, but it'll be so hard. This will gum up your sandpaper quicker, but uh, we're not interested in that. We got plenty of sandpaper, remember? I mean, if you only got one piece and you're on a budget, wait till tomorrow. See what it's doing. You gotta expect that when it's a little it's not set up yet, it's going to do that to your sandpaper. Always use the palm of your hand if you're going to do this by hand without a block. trying to feather this in. You don't want no edge there. You don't want to be able to see this. So you see how that's a smooth transition? That's exactly what I'm looking for. This is all good right here. I like this. So what I'm looking for right now, you see this imperfection here? All of these. I just dented this in because it was high. I might dent that in too. But all these imperfections, I'm almost there. I'm going to sand that a little more. Right here it's a little high. I'm going to put one more coat on this. And I want to get rid of all these imperfections. Especially this. I might have to go over this a couple times. But all this, I want to do away with that. This is almost there. I'm almost done with this. Let me set you back up. one more batch I'm gonna fill in these little spots I'm not happy with and that's it we're done we're switching the red hardener so this is the trick I'm gonna teach you here if uh, I put blue on here so you got this blue if you put red on and I just fill this in right let's say you want to oh, you want to coat the entire thing that you're doing reason for that is when you sand it off and you start seeing the blue through the red you know to stop right if you just fill in this spot like let's say i just fill in this and i just fill in this and this and i don't know like this and this i'm using the same color when i'm sanding now i'm sanding the old spot and i'm going to make this lower i don't want to do that if you use a different color it's easy to identify it but it also lets you know like where you stopped you know what i mean